Good morning. It's good to see all you guys, and once again, we're always thankful for having an opportunity to come together and uh, worship the Lord, to study His Word, and to grow in the Spirit. Um, it's good to see everybody. Um, and once again, I know you've heard Jay say it, but after service, we're having chili dinner. Um, uh, whether you're a member or not, you're welcome to come and join us uh, for our society meeting. And uh, it's going to be an interesting day. So what started me on this path of the message I'm going to preach today was some really heavy thought into a situation that uh, my, my brother Ken Smith had spoke about uh, in one of our Tuesday night meetings. And uh, he recommended that I get a book called uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs. Have you ever heard of that? The Fox's Book of Martyrs. Well, I would encourage each and every one of you to have a copy of that book. But what he told me was a story of a 17-year-old girl who lived in a time of darkness and persecution. And this 17-year-old girl facing certain death was resilient without resolve in her spirit. And she sang praises all the way up until her last breath, burning at a stake. And I, I said, what? I said to myself, man, what is this? Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but personally, I don't... Uh, I don't want a 17-year-old uh, girl to be more of a man than me at the end of the day. Uh, but it's such an inspiring story. Uh, I think um, sometimes we forget because we're in such a blessed place. Uh, and, you know, we have messages that are related to our current experiences and times. But I don't want to ever let us forget uh, how we ended up here. Uh, all the people that went before us in order for us to have the ball in this time and in this season. Extreme trials, if you look at the history of the church. It's time to destroy this myth that men and women of God are passive and weak and timid uh, and scared of everything. It's not true. See, because there's a difference in being humble and being bold, but you can possess both of those characters at the same exact time. And uh, a lot of people in a, uh, you know, they look today at the Christian faith and think, uh, you know, that's weak. Uh, just like going to prison, just for, for instance, you know, oh, I can't follow God now. You know, that's weak. Little do they know that the toughest men and women that ever walked the face of this planet were men and women of God. And uh, the enemy has set it up for us to believe that it's a weakness to follow God. When in fact, it's the exact opposite. It takes a man to follow God. It takes a, a, a bold woman to follow God. But I ask myself, what is this that we keep seeing in history? What is a, a word for such a thing as this? Does anybody have a guess? Praise God, you're a genius. Fortitude. So I began studying this word fortitude and I realized 
that we don't see it much in our Bible. In word. But in the Greek language, it's all throughout the Bible. As a matter of fact, the words uh, steadfastness and endurance and uh, patience, this is all speaking of the same thing. Uh, and in our English language, uh, we read it, and that might relate to us different things. But let me tell you what it definitely means. Fortitude. Um, and you know, God is trying to shape us. That our character would remain the same through all the seasons of our life. That we would be a man and a woman of God that does not change with the seasons. Are you with me? Uh, and I want to tell you that God knows where we're at. But he also is bringing us and growing us and shaping us. And I want to uh, explain this the best way I can. But I want to give you a quote. And I have no idea who the author is. I'm hoping it's not a, a movie. <laughs> but if it is, let it be true. If it's true. Let it be spoken, right? Fortitude is the guard and support of all the other virtues. And uh, as I studied the word fortitude, I realized this is so true. Uh, fortitude, uh, the, uh, the author of that quote was John Locke. I don't know who that is. Um, praise God. But listen to this one more time. It says, fortitude is the guard and support of all other virtues. Um, and, and to understand this word fortitude, I think it's good to understand that quote because if you have all these good qualities uh, and these good virtues and this moral excellence, it only does you so good in the face of danger and pain and trials if you have fortitude. Understand the word. You know, it is uh, an impenetrable fortress of your characters and your virtues, right? Uh, and when we look at this word, what does it look like? To you, like when I look at that word, I, I see a combination of two words. What do you see when you look at that word? That's it. Attitude and fort. And uh, I find that a very good word to explain it because it's like a fortress for your attitude. And uh, it's, uh, you know, this word fortify. In the Greek is found in our Bible in, in one place. And we always look at it in a, a negative connotation. Because in that particular passage, it is negative. Uh, and that's the scripture, 2 Corinthians. There's a, there's a lot of things in 2 Corinthians today. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And if you don't know, Paul is the one who wrote 2 Corinthians. And uh, Paul said, I learned. Somebody say, I learned. I learned. To become content. So it was something he learned. He said, I learned to become content however I am. Whether I'm weak and I'm hungry or I'm bountiful and blessed. I learned to be content in whatever stage of life that I'm in. He said, I learned. So it's something we can learn. But 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. So the word stronghold, we always look at it in a negative sense. Uh, and it's the Greek word. Where are we at? It's the Greek word. I can't even say it, but the number is 5794. And it's a fortified military stronghold. A strong walled 
fortress. And what Paul is saying is the weapons of our warfare are mighty in pulling down these military fortresses and these uh, fortified cities and uh, penetrating th through things that are fortified. You know, we're mighty. Our weapons are not carnal. We're, it's not of this flesh, but it's a mighty thing. The Holy Spirit is a mighty thing. Okay? But, see, in the positive note, a stronghold. So a stronghold also, we know, is a stronghold. So think about it like this. If, if a person has a stronghold, we think demonic or we think... Um, Yeah, we think uh, unpenetrable or, you know, we think, oh, it's a, a stronghold on somebody. Right. And and the reason that it's a bad thing is because that stronghold is a fortress around negative things. In other words, their moral compass is stuck in adultery and, uh, you know, they have no moral direction and it's a fortress. So you can't get in past that fortress, but their moral foundation is corrupt. Are you with me? So fortitude is the opposite of that. It's a stronghold. But it's with an upright moral character, you see. Uh, and it's an unpenetrable fortress. No matter what is going on on the outside, it protects that moral virtue. Are you with me? Could you understand now? So it's a stronghold, but in a good sense. Are you with me? And uh, I found that an excellent thing because without fortitude, character is, is really incomplete. It's un, undeveloped. Fortitude is a necessary virtue for a Christian life. And I'm going to tell you this because I need you to understand that when the days are evil, it requires... It requires good and just men and women to rise up and speak the truth at all costs. That's how it's been all throughout history. And that hasn't changed today. Are you with me? As a matter of fact, most people died just for us to sit in this building freely <laughs> throughout history. And 17-year-old little girls can do it. And it makes you ask yourself, well, then... What does she have? This is a, a spiritual gift. This is a, a, a virtue brought by growth and in the growth of faith. Add to your faith virtue, right? These, this is a set of virtue. Paul says, uh, you know, it, it's profitable for bodily exercise a little. But to exercise yourself to godliness is profitable in all things. And I know uh, we've been in seasons of blessing and good and great and better. And our trials are really kind of minor compared to the things people went through throughout history. And it's hard to realize that when we're comparing ourselves with ourselves. But when we compare ourselves to history... You know, you see what I'm saying? Uh, and I'm, I'm right here with you. You know, I, I know um, the littlest things will offset uh, my, my emotions, my, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it takes a minute to pull myself together and be like, ah, this, this is not godly, right? To, to be at every whim of everything. Uh, the Bible says that, uh, you know, our job as leaders, spiritual leaders, spiritual teachers, is to, to grow the body that we would grow up and not be tossed to and fro. That we would become firmly rooted and grounded in Christ. And I want you to remember what Jesus says. Jesus says this. He says, he who takes these sayings of mine and does them, he is like a house that is built on the rock. No matter what comes against it, the storm that hits it, it will not fall, but it will stand. And he says, you know, I equate the one who takes these sayings of mine and does not do them, does not put them into practice, does not grow in virtue and, and knowledge and all these things. 
It's like a house that's built on the sand. As soon as the storm comes, great is its fall. We're seeing this fortitude really all throughout the scriptures. Uh, and just think about the parable of the seeds. You know, as soon as the sun comes up, it has no depth, no root, and it scorches the seed, and it doesn't bring forth fruit. Uh, so there, this is kind of language is all over the Bible. Does anybody have any uh, examples in their mind in, in the Word of God of people who had fortitude? David, Joseph, Daniel, who? Hezekiah, Stephen, Paul. We're seeing that this is a theme throughout the whole Word of God. Um, and we've been blessed, you know, to where uh, we've gotten to live in peace and uh, blessings. And uh, it's a good thing. But just know there is a whole other side to this life. And I want to explain a character to you, John the Baptist. Because we find in John the Baptist both a fortitude and humility. A man who is not scared to tell a king exactly what it is. Are you with me? But when it comes to the kingdom of God, he says, I must decrease. That he must increase. Are you with me? Uh, and, and so we find in John the Baptist this amalgamation of both a fortitude that refuses to fold or bend or anything. But also humble concerning the kingdom of God. Concerning Jesus. Are you with me? Uh, and we know John the Baptist was a tough man. Uh, a wild man in the wilderness who ate bugs, locusts, and wild honey. Wore camel, you know, skin as his clothes. Basically lived out in the wilderness. Uh, and preached the unadulterated truth. Are you with me? In a, in, a, in a time where everybody was corrupted. In a time where the religious systems were corrupted. In a time where nobody had a moral compass. Here comes John the Baptist. Are you with me? How many knows that cost him his life? You know, there's a lot of callings in the kingdom of God, but did you know? That there is a, a certain amount of a number of people who are called to be martyrs. You know, when you are around, what are you called to be? Well, I'm called to be a pastor, teacher. You don't hear, well, I think I'm called to be a martyr. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's keep moving. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. It says, he who is slow to anger is better than a mighty, better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. Now, we've, we spoke about this before, but read it again. It says, he who is slow to anger. How many knows that is a, a valuable uh, virtue and character of the spirit of God that we be slow to anger? What does it take? But listen to what it says. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And uh, in other translations, it says better than a warrior. And he who rules his own spirit than he who takes a city. Um, and I find that amazing. But, but ask yourself, like, what does it take to move your character? What does it take? Uh, to, to move you off of your moral principles, whether it be small temptations or uh, to rise up in anger over pettiness or, uh, you know, is it small things? And uh, just know I'm not talking at you. I'm talking with you. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about, you know, what this is, is, is showing me that I've still got a lot more growing to do. And uh, it's better for a, a, a man to rule his own soul than a mighty warrior. 
It's more profitable to have a man with you that knows how to rule his own soul than a mighty warrior or one who takes a whole city. One who has the possession of the warrior knowledge to conquer a whole city. It's better to have that man who rules over his own spirit or soul. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. Another one like it. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down and without walls. Now, how does that relate to our fortitude? Like a city broken down without walls. You're, 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 that, that's that uh, lack of fortitude. A city that's easy to crumble and fall. You know, a city that's easy to capture and be taken over. That fortitude is like the wall. That stronghold that keeps your moral principles intact. Are you with me? All right, so um, we're just going to go a few more places. Uh, Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4 through 7. Uh, and if you know, uh, Isaiah was a martyr. Uh, at a, and he came in a time where the whole world was backwards again. Uh, and God keeps calling men like this that have no uh, resolve. They have strong fortitude and they refuse to accept the lie. But listen to what Isaiah says. He says, the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned. That I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who plucked out my beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint. And I know that I will not be put to shame. Um, and if you know Isaiah, his writings, uh, the latter, latter half of his writing is uh, prophetic of Jesus. But, uh, you know, he's saying, uh, you know, I give my cheek to those who, who beat me and my my back to those who beat me, but I will set my face like flint and I know that I will not be put to shame. This is fortitude. Acts chapter 5 verse 33. And uh, this is the situation where the uh, disciples of Christ are... Um, they have received the Holy Spirit. They're a new people. Uh, but they have been given the commission to preach the gospel. First to the Jews in Jerusalem and then to all the world. Every one of them, uh, most of every one of them died in the process of that. Are you with me? But it says... Uh, when they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. Talking about the Jews who heard the gospel. Then one in the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamiel, teacher of the law held in respect by all the people, and commanded them to put apostles, put the apostles outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, now Gamiel was actually the teacher of Paul, a very wise man and very respected in his days. And this is his advice. He says, and he said to them, men of Israel, take heed to yourself that you intend to do regarding these men. By what you uh, intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Thaddeus rose up claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, joined him. And was, and was slain. And all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census. 
and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. He says, and I now say to you, keep away from these men. This is his advice to these uh, rulers and these Israelites. He said, keep away from these men. And let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it. Listen to that language. He said, but if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it. 2,000 years later, here we go. Uh, least... You even be found to fight against God. And they agreed with him. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded them that they speak. They not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Sorry, I'm brand new trying to read it off this screen back here. So they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing. And I just, I want you to pause on that for a second. They, they got sent out and they preached the gospel. They, they uh, grabbed them up, they beat them, and then they let them go. And they came out rejoicing. Listen to why. It says that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Uh, they received a command from them. Don't preach in this name no more. They beat the, beat the snot out of them. Sent them on their way and said, don't do it again. And here they are rejoicing. Taking them stripes like a champ. Coming out preaching the gospel everywhere still. Uh, and just like Peter who said, I don't know if it's uh, who, what you think about it, but it's better that I obey God than to obey man. Now, uh, for this next little section, uh, we're going we're gonna to deal with, a, a, we've only got a few more places we're going, but uh, I want you to hear the writings of Paul. And uh, this next little section, we're going to deal with Paul. And it's uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. We know that Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles. Uh, and and uh, pretty much he was a foundation that God used to create everything today, you know, uh, as the Gentile church, us who are not Jews, that we would become Jews in Christ. And listen to his words. He says, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked at night and a day. And I have been in the deep. In journeys often. In perils of waters, in perils of Robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, the very people he was trying to reach, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, <coughs> and in perils among his own brethren, but false brethren. In weariness and in toil, in sleepness, sleeplessness often, in hunger, and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily is my deep concern for all the church. Uh, and I want, you to, I want you to ask yourself, like, uh, is this weakness? Uh, please, uh, I mean, think about that. It says, who is weak and I am not weak? Who is made to stumble and I am not? Or I do not burn with indignation. If I must boast, I will boast in the things which concern my infirmities, my weaknesses. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. In, Democ uh, in Damascus, the governor under... Who wants to give that word uh, name a shot? Arty? Artis? Artis, the king, was guarding the city of the Damascians? 
with a garrison desiring to arrest me. But I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped from their hands. Uh, so I just want you to understand that God called this man Paul. Uh, one of the very first things he told him was, I'm going to show you how many things you're going to suffer for the kingdom, Paul. And we look at that and we're thinking, uh, that's strange. You know, that's a gospel that I don't know much about. But if we understand Paul's writings, we understand that Paul grew strong in the spirit. And basically, no matter what come at him, he learned to be content in whatever state he was in while he's floating out on a log out there in the ocean. Just, I know you got this God, you know, uh, getting whipped by the Jews. He's trying to preach to the Jews and they're whipping him and beating him because he refuses to stop preaching the truth. He refuses. Because of his fortitude. The very people he was sent out to, to reach are the ones beating him. The Gentiles. And then suffering persecutions from his own brethren. Who wants to be an apostle? Huh? You know, that word gets used very lightly, but this is apostleship. Uh, it's a call of deep, deep things of God. Uh, bring up that next scripture, brother. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And I want you to understand Paul and how he thinks. He says, and, and least I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, least I be exalted above measure. Now, we understand that pride is of the devil. Are you with me? Uh, and Paul understood this as well, and he interprets the things that are happening in his life and this buffering of this Satan is given to him that those revelations that he received that would puff him up beyond men and uh, live in a rim way above them, he received a thorn in the flesh to keep him humble and low. Because, God forbid, he rise up in pride and fall in the same condemnation as the devil. Sometimes things that are not good for us work out for our good, even though we don't realize it and we don't like it and whatever, you know. He says, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, listen to him, most gladly, this is his joy, this is, he's glad. I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reapproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Do y'all hear that language? He says, I take pleasure in being in need. I take pleasure uh, in all these trials and uh, getting these stripes. Why? Because he realizes that that's, those things have kept him humble. And that the power of Christ would rest upon him. Man, that is a trade-off, ain't it? Uh, us, we're, you know, in 2020, we, I, I think we, we, we need to grow and understand these things. You know, we, we cling to the flesh and what blessed is, is everything to our flesh. We don't realize that uh, sometimes persecution is blessed for your spirit. Sometimes trial uh, is what humbles you and brings you to a closer and stronger walk with God. It builds character. A character that you can't get anywhere else. It comes through those seasons. And I know this isn't like a, a sunshiny, rainbowy message. But this is a word for another season. Because we're going to have good days. We, we pretty much know how to be. Well, maybe we don't. But we can praise God in the good days. But I'm trying to teach you that 
Paul understood something that through all things, he was more than a conqueror. Every season never changed his character. Just like Joseph, just like Daniel. They, they had a character that was uh, moral, superior morally, in virtues of excellence, but they also had fortitude that allowed them never to be moved out of those moral principles and those characters. Uh, and I'm just going here just because it's beautiful. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. And I know you've heard this before. Listen to this. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now he's talking about a treasure in a bodily form, in an earthen vessels. What's this treasure he's talking about? That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus. That's a strange statement. For Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Uh, now, I don't know about you, but that's probably one of my most favorite scriptures. It's so poetic. It's like two extremes. It's like, uh, hey, man, uh, you know, we're beat down, but we are not destroyed. This strange thing of Paul barely escaping out of a window and preaching and being beaten uh, and, and somehow getting through these crowds. He, he was stoned. That means a whole group of people took stones and threw it at him. And, and that's how they execute people. He still lived, struck down, but not Destroyed, pressed on every side. Now, he's not just getting it from over here. He's getting it from everywhere. Are you with me? Uh, and I think that um, this is a level of Christianity that we know exists. But I think that we've yet to grow there because we haven't had to. Because a lot of those trials and things that came upon them uh, is the very reason they were growing to this mass capacity of being just like Jesus. Uh, and I mean, that's the way that I've seen and interpreted through the scriptures. That might change later. But I realized that those seasons of rain and storms is necessary for character development. And if you have this wisdom and understanding, it helps you endure the things that are coming into your life. Because God is shaping you with trials. He's allowing you to be tried. Uh, but see, the thing about it is the enemy cannot stand somebody that has moral excellence and fortitude. He cannot stand a man that literally understands the truth of God that does not resolve or pull back or be uh, shifted. You know, most people can be bought. You know, most people can be uh, shifted in some way or another to throw them off of their moral excellence. And uh, that's Satan's objective because the reason why is because a man who does not bend or break is dangerous. To the kingdom of darkness. Because one man. Will become the troubler. Of a whole evil city. Uh, and if you don't know where I'm going with that. Uh, I want you to think about Elijah. Elijah was a lot like John the Baptist. In that, that day the kings and the systems were evil. But Elijah wouldn't bend. And uh, he shows up on the scene and Ahab, look, he says, is that you, Elijah? You troubler of all of Israel? Was that true? 
No, he, he, that wasn't true. The real troubler of all of Israel was the king of Israel. And Elijah refused. Elijah refused to bow to Baal. Elijah refused. He spoke the truth, stood up for the truth, willing to die for the truth. But Elijah was a man like John the Baptist. Tough. It's grit. He, he camel hair and locust kind of guy. Are you with me? They had these big old beards. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I'm just saying they, they, they were, were men of strength. They were strange qualities in these men, but they were required in their time to stand for the truth. Uh, and I think that if you think about it, if people didn't stand in their time, we wouldn't even know the truth. Are you with me? And sometimes it requires men to rise up. When the days become evil and dark and there's no truth in sight, people's moral principles are completely corrupt and everywhere, it requires people to be bold and have courage and suffer whatever consequences comes with that, knowing that God is with you. Are you with me? And uh, this is moral excellence. You know, this is uh, men of God. It's not sissified. It's not weak. It's the toughest men and women that ever walked the face of this planet were men and women of God. See, but they didn't follow the crowd, so they were hated. Are you with me? They didn't keep quiet when it was time to speak truth and righteousness and justice. Are you with me? And they were hated, hated, and hated. Uh, I've got one more place I want to go, and that's Acts chapter 17, verse 5. Because what had started out as this little crowd of Jesus followers... By growing in the truth and receiving the Spirit of God, they gained an a interesting reputation. Let's read it together. But the Jews who were not persuaded became envious, becoming envious. Took some of the evil men, so they, they partnered themselves with evil men because they were envious. From the marketplace and gathering a mob set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason. Uh, he was one with the disciples. And sought to bring them out to the people. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brethren to the rulers of the city crying out, These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. So we understand that, yes, there is a conflict of interests. Sometimes uh, the world has its own uh, way of doing things that does not align with the kingdom of God. And you must know and have your own moral set of principles built with a foundation in understanding the Word of God. You must, because there is times where you stand. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, just think of Daniel. Uh, and he has a very similar story as to Joseph's, how he rose up in a foreign land and God made him a, a judge in this uh, land that was not his own home. But uh, the king had raised him up above everybody. And the, the two people that were supposed to be with him and working in, with him, and the 120 that was under him, rulers, they were looking for a way to remove Daniel because they were evil and he was good. They could not find a way to remove Daniel because his moral excellence were superior. They were good. They were right. So the only option they had was to change the law. And the only way they could find a way to get Daniel out of the way 
was to change the laws and cause him to go against his own God. And we know the story. He got thrown in a lion's den. Are you with me? But how I many knows when they said, you shall not pray to any other God for 30 days, if you get caught worshiping or praying to another God, you will be thrown in a lion's den. And it says right after that, Daniel went up there with his windows wide open and prayed to God, as he always did for many, many years. And uh, I find that amazing because, look, there are things that we will not compromise. Do you understand? Amen. There's things that you need to understand. I'm, I'm, I'm just talking as an individual. Listen, I'm... I'm, a, I'm just a man uh, in this time, but, you know, that 17-year-old that girl is pretty inspiring. And then it reminded me of all of history. That in tough times, it's tough men and women that stand up and have courage and boldness inspired by the Holy Spirit. But we got to grow. That's stuff you don't do in the flesh. Are you with me? Amen. You got to grow. And that's the journey we're on. Uh, but I want you to understand the extremities uh, of good days and bad days and uh, how God is with you through them all. And, over the, and overall, we, we spoke about this. Uh, you know, all things work together for the good to those who love God and are called according to His purposes. Fortitude. I want you to remember that word. I didn't even really get into the depths of the meaning of the word, but I think we walked away with a pretty good understanding of fortitude. Uh, it has a lot to do with courage and boldness and endurance. Are you with me? Long suffering. Being able to ride that suffering all the way to the end, keep your character, your, your virtues intact. Are you with me? And that's all I wanted to deliver today. I know it uh, seems a little gloomy and doomy, but these, this kind of stuff is what uh, shapes your mind first, that you can understand. This is also Christianity. We are not a weak people. Number one, we have the presence of God with us. And, and we know, uh, I've, I've said it once, uh, and I've said it a thousand times. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abengo. And uh, our God will deliver us. And even if he don't, is that not what all of the Christian walk is about? Amen. That we will go and be with the Lord. I do not fear men. Do No, Jesus says, do not fear men. But fear him who can destroy both the soul and the body. Are you with me? So I just want us to understand these things and grow as a people. We don't got to be very big. But how many knows it only takes one man, one woman, to trouble a whole city, Amen. to turn the world upside down, a small group. But it's important that we grow spiritually strong. Are you with me? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you so much just for giving us the opportunity to come together and lift up your name. We pray that you just be with each and every family that needs different things, healing and financial and these things. I pray that you also give us a spirit of fortitude. Teach us what is right and never to bend or sway. Give us a good, strong moral compass. And teach us to live for your purpose. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.